One thing that you might have noticed in the last video is that I had one reverse light working and two taillights working, but if you look at this tail light, it's all cracked and crappy. This reverse one's okay. This one's totally shot, and this one's okay. The plan is I'm going to replace both reverse lights and that tail light with these. These are uh, lights that I've, lenses I guess, that I've gotten used off of Facebook and off of eBay. I got this at a trade swap meet for a dollar. Anyway, they're better than what's on the car. They're not perfect because if you want to buy a brand new set, it's $200. This car doesn't really, I don't know, it's not going to be at that level where everything needs to be 100% brand new, but these will just, they'll make it look a whole bunch better and not for much money. The interesting thing about 74 is that they're the only year that look like this without screw holes in each end. They actually have the studs on the back, which is different, but uh, something that I didn't know until I got this car and I looked at it and I was like, hey, there's no screw holes. The 75 all the way to 79 have screw holes from the outside, which is probably smarter. So let's get to putting them in. When I first bought this car, I knew I was going to have to deal with some uh, electrical bubble work, but this is amazing how much crap is in this rear harness. So this is where it starts. So I know I'm good up until here. This is the um, driver's side tail light. This is the driver's side reverse light. But I mean, stuff like this, like why is it, why would you do that? It leads to absolutely nothing. Then you got this wire nut, and then the whole harness goes to here, and there all the wires change colors. And then it comes down all the way to here, where they change colors a third time, and then in some cases a fourth time. I mean, it's all kinds of just ridiculous. Like really, this is not necessary at all. Somebody had way too much fun with these with these crimps. So I have the job to clean this up and make it back to what it's supposed to be. I mean, here, here's what I don't get. So you have a black wire, then you change it to a green wire, and a green one to a white one, and then a green one to a yellow one, and then a brown one to a big brown one, and then black to green. It's like, come on, guys, you can do better than that. You have green wires, use green wires. Anyway, I knew I was going to have to do this. I'm kind of biting the bullet today and making sure I get all the tail lights, reverse lights, and the license plate lights. Luckily, they didn't touch those getting all that stuff working and mounted and ready to go. Luckily, for whoever buys this car from me, I have a complete rear um, wiring harness. I believe it's from a 79. The only difference is gonna be there's a couple extra wires for the uh, power antenna, which this car doesn't have. But if you look at these sockets, they're all identical. So basically three wires, wires for the stoplight, and you have two ones for two for the reverse light and then these are the marker lights. I believe the license plate light is a separate um, harness, at least on this 74 it is. And if you look, what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to, here's the, here's the harness and I plan on just splicing it pretty much about here and then splicing that into the harness here and then that will make the, hopefully, will make the uh, harness a little easier to deal with and cut out all the bubba and have just one set of connections and that's it. Part of getting the reverse lights and the turn signals and all that stuff to work is taking this column apart. When I got the car there was no turn signal switch at all so that is new and I had to buy it but also upon taking apart the column uh, there's a few issues, there's a lot of pieces missing and luckily for me, I have another column I can take apart. This column is out of a 77. Luckily from here up is the same. So the parts I'll be using are this hub, is the lock plate, all the pieces in here, all these shims and stuff like that. There's a rod inside of this I need as well. It all needs to be transferred to the other one. Um, it won't cost me any money, it just cost me some time to get it all apart. I'm thinking you guys are going to be surprised how many of these pieces I'm going to be able to, to get from this steering column. So I, the upper bearing in the column 
this little plastic piece was broken. So I robbed that, and then from there, the two um, bearing race, the bearing race and the shim, and then the spring, and then this, and then this, and then that, and then that, and then the horn contact pieces, all that stuff I'm going to be able to use on the column in this 74. But first what I want to do is I got some wheel bearing grease and I'm going to make sure all these ball bearings stay in place by putting a lot of grease on it. That way when I put it in the car it will stay. So here's the finished product. This is the best way I can, I can think to fix that mess is by just splicing in another harness. So I have the license plate light, or these are the marker lights. Uh, I have the reverse, everything works except for the reverse lights, which I'm thinking isn't a problem with anything in this harness. I think it's a problem inside the car. Um, I also need to clean all of these bulbs and contacts and stuff, but we've got turn signals, we've got brake lights, we have parking lights, and I just need to figure out the reverse lights. But I mean, that's a much better fix than anything I can think of. That's about as good as you can get without replacing the entire rear harness. I'll make another little video clip once I have everything in to show you how it works. After way too long, here's the end result. These taillights take forever to put in and out because the bolts are on the back, but let me show you. I don't know if I've made a video of this yet, but I replaced this broken taillight. It's got cracks and you can see white lines through it when it was lit. With this one, it's not perfect, but it's a heck of a lot better than the old one. Here is the new reverse or the used new reverse lens compared to the old reverse lens you can see it's got crap in it from breaking this is the nicest one right here I already threw away the crappy one uh, that I replaced that one with but the reason why I'm excited about this right lens is that it matches really nice with this left lens also got the the markers to light up so it's just one step closer from to being a, a real car again instead of just a shell also I gotta put these license plate lights in there's just little lenses that go like this to light it up but that's unique to 74 I don't know why they decided that was a good idea but there it is one step closer I got one side of this fiberglass leaf spring off and there's not much arch to these things at all my only concern is that this exhaust it's supposed to go under right under the center of the springs and stuff but it's not they, they welded it in kind of crappy um, my only concern is putting the new one in it's gonna get in the way so I have to maybe drop it from here in the back we'll see but I'm surprised usually these springs they're a lot tighter than that. I don't know if that's a normal fiberglass spring thing or is this one really just that flat. These are the springs that uh, will be going in it. They're out of parts cars, but they're still good springs. Interesting thing is that there actually are two differences and the difference is going to be in your width. So there's from here to here, there's two and a quarter and there's also two and a half. And I believe the correct one for this 74 is going to be the two and a quarter thick spring. This is the way that I take spring leaf springs apart. I put a uh, a vice grip on the leaf spring, make sure it's really really tight and then I use the jack, jack up against it. That will force the leaf spring up and take off the pressure on this nut. Then from there it just comes apart. You remove the the bolt and then it all just comes down. So that's the way I do it. It's the safest way because normally, especially with the steel ones, these springs are under a lot of pressure, so better to be safe than sorry. Well, that's a problem. I don't think it's supposed to wiggle like that. It's missing this bushing up here. It's all going to come out. I am close to putting this steel spring back into this car. Something interesting, I had to drop the exhaust. I had to drill out some rivets. I'll replace, replace the rivets with screws. But if you notice, this exhaust is really wide. It's supposed to be centered underneath the rear end. Obviously aftermarket, but I think I can make it work. The best part is, all I have to buy are the end links for the leaf spring, and I'll go back in. I don't have to replace these crappy bushings to make up for the difference in thickness between the fiberglass and the steel. 
I checked the curve on this one. It's a good spring. It's the correct width, so it should work really nice.